2003. To deal with such situations, people adopt various strategies designed to stretch their cognitive resources to let them do more, with less effort, than would otherwise be the case. This is one major reason that so much of our social thought occurs on automatic in a quick and relatively effortless manner rather than in a careful, systematic, arduous way. We'll discuss the costs and potential benefits of this thought process later. Here, however, we'll focus on techniques we use to deal quickly with large amounts of information, especially under conditions of uncertainty where the correct answer is difficult to know or would take a great deal of effort to determine. While many strategies exist for making sense of complex information, one of the most useful tactics involve heuristic simple rules for making complex decisions or drawing inferences in a rapid and efficient manner. 2.1.1 Representativeness, judging by resemblance. Suppose that you have just met your next door neighbor for the first time. While chatting with her, you notice that she is dressed conservatively, is neat in her personal habits, has a very large library in her home, and seems to be very gentle and a little shy. Later you realize that she never mentioned what she does for a living. Is she a business manager, a physician, a waitress, an artist, a dancer, or a librarian? One quick way of making a guess is to compare her with a prototype list of attributes commonly possessed by members of each of these occupations. How well does she resemble persons you have met in each of these fields or, perhaps, the typical member of these fields? Cheyenne Oppenheimer, 2009. If you proceed in this manner, you may quickly conclude that she is likely to be a librarian, her traits seem closer to those associated with this profession than they do to the traits associated with physicians, dancers, or business executives. If you made your judgment about your neighbor's occupation in this manner, you used the representativeness heuristic. In other words, you made your judgment on the basis of a relatively simple rule, the more an individual seems to resemble or match a given group, the more likely she or he is to belong to that group. Are such judgments accurate? Often they are, because belonging to certain groups does affect the behavior and style of persons in them, and because people with certain traits are attracted to particular groups in the first place. But sometimes, judgments based on representativeness are wrong, mainly for the following reason. Decisions or judgments made on the basis of this rule tend to ignore base rates of frequency with which given events or categories, example occupations, occur in the total population. Kahneman and Tversky, 1973. Kahneman and Frederick, 2002. In fact, there are many more business managers than librarians. Thus, even though your neighbor seemed more similar to the prototype of librarians than managers in terms of her traits, the chances are actually higher that she is a manager than a librarian. The representativeness heuristic is also used when judging whether specific causes resemble each other and are therefore likely to produce effects that are similar in terms of magnitude. That is, when people are asked to judge the likelihood that a particular effect, example either many or a few people die of a disease, was produced by a particular cause, example an unusually infectious bacteria or a standard strain, they are likely to expect the strength of the cause to match its effect. However, cultural groups differ in the extent to which they rely on the representativeness heuristic and expect like to go with like in terms of causes and effects. In particular, people from Asia tend to consider more potential causal factors when judging effects than do Americans. Choi, Dale, Kimprito, and Park, 2003. Because agents consider more information and arrive at more complex attributions when judging an event, they should show less evidence of thinking based on the representativeness heuristic judgment simplification strategy compared to North Americans. To test this reasoning, researchers Spina ETAL, 2010, asked students in China and Canada to rate the likelihood that a high or low magnitude effect, few or many deaths, was caused by a virus that differed in magnitude, a strain that was treatment resistant or a standard strain that could be controlled with medical treatment. While participants in both national groups showed evidence of expecting high magnitude effects, many deaths, to be produced by high magnitude causes, the treatment resistant virus strain, and low magnitude effects, few deaths, to be produced by low magnitude causes, the standard strain of the virus, Canadian participants showed this effect much more strongly than the Chinese participants. Such reasoning differences could potentially result in difficulty when members of different groups seek to achieve agreement on how best to tackle problems affecting the world as a whole, such as climate change. Westerners may expect that big causes have to be tackled to reduce the likelihood of global warming, whereas Asians may be comfortable emphasizing more minor causes with substantial outcomes such as climate change. 2.1.2 Availability If I can recall many instances, they must be frequent. When estimating event frequencies or their likelihood, people may simply not know the correct answer even for events in their own lives. So how do they arrive at a response? Ask yourself, how often have you talked on your cell phone while driving? If you can remember quite a few instances, you'd probably conclude it happens quite often. This is an example of judging frequency based on the ease with which instances can be brought to mind. Now consider another, non-self-related question, are you safer driving in a huge SUV or in a smaller, lighter car? Many people would answer, in the big SUV, thinking that if you are in an accident, you are less likely to get hurt in a big vehicle compared to a small one. While that might seem to be correct, actual data indicate that death rates, number of deaths per 1 million vehicles on the road, are higher for SUVs than smaller cars, example. Gladwell, 2004. So why do so many people conclude falsely that they are safer in the bulky SUV? Like the cell phone, use question, the answer seems to involve what easily comes to mind when we think about this question. Most people can recall scenes in which a huge vehicle had literally crushed another smaller vehicle in an accident. Because such scenes are dramatic, we can readily bring them to mind. But this ease of retrieval effect may mislead us. We assume that because such scenes are readily available in memory, they accurately reflect the overall frequency, when, in fact, they don't. For instance, such recall does not remind us of the fact that SUVs are involved in accidents more often than smaller, lighter cars, large SUVs tip over more easily than other vehicles, and SUVs are favored by less careful drivers who are more likely to be involved in accidents. This example, and many similar judgment errors, illustrates the operation of the Availability heuristic, another cognitive rule of thumb suggesting that the easier it is to bring information to mind, the greater its impact on subsequent judgments or decisions. Use of this heuristic makes good sense much of the time. After all, the fact that we can bring some types of information to mind quite readily suggests that it may indeed be frequent or important, so it should influence our judgments and decisions. But relying on availability in making social judgments can also lead to errors. Specifically, it can lead us to overestimate the likelihood of events that are dramatic but rare, because they are easy to bring to mind. Consistent with this availability principle, many people fear traveling in airplanes more than traveling in automobiles, even though the chances of dying in an auto accident are hundreds of times higher. Likewise, people tend to overestimate murder as a cause of death and underestimate more mundane but much more frequent killers such as heart disease and stroke. Because of the frequency that murder and other dramatic causes of death are seen in the mass media, instances are easier to retrieve from memory than the various natural causes of death that are rarely presented in the media. Here's another, perhaps more troubling, example. Physicians who received information about a disease later misdiagnosed clinical cases that were superficially similar to the disease they had learned about earlier. Schmidt ETAL, 2014. When the media or other sources focus frequently on a particular type of illness, even doctors may show the influence of this bias because certain disease features are more readily brought to mind than others. As a result, doctors' diagnoses may reflect differences due to the ease of data retrieval thus revealing the effect of availability heuristic use. In what other way can the availability heuristic influence us? Research suggests that our desires can bias our decision-making toward greater risk-taking. Mishra, 2014. For instance, during poor economic conditions, the wisest choice might be to conserve money and make low-risk investments. But human behavior does not always conform to rational choice predictions. Ockerlock and Schiller, 2009. 
Consider how the need for money might increase if you perceive your economic future to be threatened. Does the idea of taking financial risks to improve your financial condition seem more compelling? This idea is consistent with findings that people tend to overestimate the likelihood that gambling will bring financial success and gambling tends to increase during economic downturns. Canadian Gaming Association, 2011. Experiments have tested whether economic threat can make gambling more attractive. Research by Wall, Branscom, and Lister, 2014, first induced some students to believe that their economic future was gloomy due to the global financial crisis. In contrast, students in the control group simply read about money production at the National Mint. Beliefs such as I think of gambling like a financial investment were assessed in both groups. Then, all participants received $10 and were given